One topic that comes up and relates a lot to isomers, but is somewhat debated whether or not these are actually isomers of each other, this topic is conformers and rotamers. You might hear them referred to as conformational isomers or rotational isomers. And what these are is they are different forms of a compound or molecule that's created by the fact that sigma bonds can rotate. So as different groups rotate around a single bond, you'll have slightly different structures based on where the different groups are in relation to each other. And conformational isomers or rotational isomers, some say that they are diastereomers, others say that they're not true isomers because they're the exact same compound, just slightly twisted differently at a different point in time. So you won't be tested on the exact definition of whether they're an isomer or what type of isomer they are, but it is something that you can be aware of because it relates to energy dynamics and a lot of the repulsion and attraction principles can be tested by looking at these. The way that we visualize our conformers or rotamers is by setting up a thing called a Newman projection. And the Newman projection is just a way of visualizing an interaction. So here we have a compound where we have three substituents on this carbon and three substituents on this carbon over here. And the Newman projection essentially makes it look as though we're staring straight down this bond, this carbon-carbon bond, visualize looking straight down it. And the three groups in the front are represented by this sort of uh, triangular-like formation. And the three ones in the back have a circle and they're attached to them. And so as this group rotates, we might see the position of the circle move to indicate that these are now lining up with each other rather than kind of staggered with each other. And so the Newman projection, the way to think about it is just visualize looking straight down that carbon-carbon bond and examining whether these things have twisted a bit, you know, they might twist in space a little bit like that, and seeing the overall arrangement of these two things. When you're dealing with Newman projections, there are two primary configurations to be looking at. You have staggered and eclipsed. Staggered means that these are fairly spaced out from each other. There's as much distance and as little hindrance as possible between the groups in the back and the groups in the front. So they're less likely to have steric interactions along that carbon-carbon bond. Eclipsed means that they've twisted in such a way that they're pretty much overlaying each other. So that they're both sort of occupying the same region in space, except one is on the far side of that carbon bond and one is on the near side of that carbon-carbon bond. So your two major categories are staggered and eclipsed. And you should be aware of these two terms. Staggered means that there's a fair bit of space and they're staggered, they're about as far from each other as they can get. Eclipsed means that the substituents on the back carbon are overlapping in space in a way with the groups or substituents on the near carbon. And from there then we can get to a series of different definitions and we can talk about how these relate to the energy level and stability. And so what I've done here is I've drawn a series of six different ways in which this molecule could twist around that sigma bond and we've assigned them various names and so uh, notice that in all of these we're leaving this CH3 methyl group at the top in all of the front ones so the ones facing you we haven't moved them in this but what we have done is we've rotated the sigma bond in so that the back substituents are moving around in space. This chlorine moves from here to here, down to there, over to a more eclipsed position, and so on. And this will allow us to then frame the discussion. We have three that are staggered. Notice how the back groups are sort of bisecting the angles of the front groups, and that's a very low energy stable conformation. And then three of them are eclipsed. So the first, third, and fifth are all staggered, and the second, fourth, and sixth are eclipsed. But even within that discussion, there is some terminology that you can encounter. 
Anti-staggered is the first one, and we use that for a staggered conformation that has the largest or most hindered functional groups as far from each other as possible. So notice that this methyl group is facing down on the back carbon and facing up on the front carbon. And so there's very little chance of these interacting in space. So imagine if this bond twisted and the methyl group ended up facing down, there's far less steric hindrance in an anti-staggered position. And what I've done here is at the bottom, I've plotted energy level and compared the energy levels for all of these different conformations. Remember that energy level or potential energy is inversely proportional or inversely related to the stability. When you have very little steric energy, steric hindrance, that is very stable. So low energy, high stability. And so you'll notice that the anti-staggered is the lowest energy of all of these different groups. Then when we start to pivot these pieces a bit, we get an eclipsed conformation because these are now overlapping in space. But notice that the very hindered methyl group isn't directly eclipsing the other methyl groups. So there's not a maximal amount of hindrance. It's still higher energy than the anti-staggered position, but it's not the worst or most unstable conformation you can have. Then our next rotational isomer we get is one that is staggered, but not ideally staggered. It's not anti-staggered because now the methyl groups are kind of close to each other. There's a chance of those CH bonds maybe interacting with other ones. Perhaps the electrons in those bonds might interact with each other. And, uh, but it is still a fairly stable one because of the staggered conformation. And we call this GAUCHE, G-A-U-C-H-E, is the word for a staggered but not ideally staggered conformation. So notice we've seen the energy level dip a bit. This is more stable than the eclipsed position. As we rotate them more, we get to something that isn't technically always used as a, as a term when discussing these conformers and rotomers, but you will encounter it. And that is a term called fully eclipsed. It's the least stable form because it's an eclipsed conformation where your large groups, your methyl groups, and these could even be bigger. These could be tert butyl groups where that carbon is now attached to three other methyl groups where these are overlapping with each other. And realize that this CH3 looks simple here, but if we were to draw out a C with all the H's there, there are a lot of electrons and a lot of bonds that have a chance of interfering across this carbon-carbon bond here and thus creating a lot of hindrance. And so here we've drawn this with the highest energy level. It is the least stable conformational isomer of this particular compound that we're dealing with. Then as we rotate it further, we once again get another gauche conformation where it's staggered but the CH3 groups aren't ideally far from each other. And uh, this is, again, you know, a fairly low energy. And then we come to an eclipsed, but not fully eclipsed. So the CH3 groups aren't eclipsing each other. And once again, it's a slightly higher, but not as high as that fully eclipsed conformation. And so now we've completed a full rotation of this carbon's groups relative to that carbon's groups. And so once you do that, you can understand the difference between these conformers and rotomers. Realize that there are big categories of staggered versus eclipse. And then also think about the two very special ones, the anti-staggered and the fully eclipsed. These are very extreme energy levels that you might encounter. Now, this is, some people will say that these aren't true isomers because it's just the same compound rotating around a little bit. So something that is fully eclipsed could very quickly turn into something that was gauche or eclipsed or something like that. And so they're not true isomers of each other in a way because they're actually the same compound just at different periods in time. But others will say that they're diastereomers because they have the same connectivity and they're not mirror images of each other, but they're not exactly spatially the same compound. And so just be aware of these conformational isomers or rotational isomers and know how to read a Newman projection with the, this group here is closer to you. And if you're staring down that carbon-carbon bond, then this group here is further from you. 
And as soon as you understand that and the energy dynamics, then that's really all you need to know. And you're unlikely to be tested on the real distinction of this from other types of isomers. But it is good to be aware that some people call them diastereomers. Some say they're not isomers at all. But they are a spatial relationship that you can see tested on your MCAT.